Hello, I'm Mike, and welcome to How to Mint an NFT. I'm going to show you right now how to do zero to thousands of NFTs, however many you want in your collection. And I'm going to show you how to list it on OpenSea. As you see here, this is our final product. Um, I actually made a thousand unique images. I've only minted five so far, but you see here um, on OpenSea, this is my collection. And I've got the five that have minted so far here. I've got one of them listed. If we look at it, you can see the way we minted it. It allows for OpenSea. I didn't have to do any of this. OpenSea looks at the NFT. It can tell you its properties. Um, you can write a little blurb, give you the details, the contract address, the token ID, the token standard. Um, the way that we mint the NFT allows OpenSea to do all that for us. And then we just have to come in and say, hey, let's put it up for sale. Because that's what you do with NFTs, right? So let's get to it. I'm going to show you every single step, start to finish. Nothing skipped. Don't worry. We're going to go all the way through it. I am going to start by letting you know the general flow. There's many steps. So. First thing is we are going to create the art. We're going to use a free software called GIMP. All the software, everything we're using is free. The only thing you're going to pay is the Ethereum gas fees, which can be pricey. So I'll let you know when we get to that point how much I paid. So uh, create our images or create the layers, the art. Then we will use a Python script to create the images. And this will combine all the layers into unique images. And then we will use um, Pinata to upload our, upload our images to IPFS. Then we'll, we, we will use the, another Python script to create the metadata for the images. That's how the NFT knows where to find the image and what the, all the traits are. And that's how OpenSea can, can read the NFT and say it's got this hair color and this blank feature. Then we're going to use Remix to deploy our NFT contract and mint our NFTs. And then we'll use OpenSea to list them for sale because what else are we going to do with it? Great. First thing, we want art. So you may be asking yourself, Mike, why are you a white man making images of black women? Hopefully you find these women to be dope black women who look great and have great hair and, and uh, accessories and shirts and lips and color lip colors. Um, because I made these for my wife and I wanted to show her some representation in the crypto space of which um, it's all tech bros. Oh shit, that's me. Okay, so, and you know what, if I can sell any, maybe we can pay off her student loans. That'd be great. All right, so how do I get this? How do I get this? Well, we start, uh oh, I got to move my little head here. So, GIMP. This is not a GIMP tutorial. Sorry. There's just too much, but um, there's plenty of good content out there. What we do, and I'm going to show you. Let's start stripping away stuff so you see what's happening here. I have made a bunch of layers. I've basically given myself a bunch of options. So if you see here down in the bottom right, all this stuff, I have a bunch of different options and I'm showing one option right now. So if you see here earring chunky hoops, let's get rid of that. See the earrings go away. Let's do the next earring. Wedding earring. That's because what's that's what the earring my wife wore when we got married. Uh, earring hoops. So as you can see here, earring triangle. So we have I have created a bunch of different layers and I'm gonna I'll strip away more so you get it even better. Let's get rid of this hair. I've got another hair option. Let's turn that one on and off. Okay. Let's go to another hair option. Look at that. That's nice. Let's do another hair option. No, same one. So you see these, I'm making all these layers and you'll get it in a second. Now shirts. Look at that. New shirt, new shirt, new shirt. So you get, I think you might be getting it now. Um, let's show you different backgrounds. Different background, even different background. So the point of all these layers is that we are going to export 
each of these options, each of these layers, one by one, is their own image. And what that means is that we can use a Python script that's going to take all these options. So you've got four different lip choices, a bunch of different hair choices, a bunch of different shirt choices. And this Python script is going to combine all these options into randomly generated images that are then all unique. And so that's why um, you create this art and you give yourself a bunch of options. So I am going to get rid of everything and let's just keep the necklace. Let's say we are going to actually, okay, so sorry, I'm turning off all these layers. Let's just start from the bottom. I'm not gonna do all these right now because you don't really need to see it. Because once you see one, you've seen it all. But basically we're gonna start from the bottom and we're gonna export each layer one by one. So you see this, how, uh, granted this, the skin, head outline, my, my body, eyes, pupils, eyebrows, nose, and bra is this is the base of the model and then everything gets added onto here. So actually I would export this and what I would do is I would go to file and GIMP and I would go to export as and I would export it as a PNG and into my layers folder and I would, I would title this as uh, like body base or whatever and then hit export. I'm not going to do it because I don't need to. Then, um, you, so you got, it doesn't matter which order you do these in as long as you get them all out. But what we can do then is, that's our base body. And now we want every feature to get rolled out. So now I would start back at the bottom and I go, okay, this is the background purple. I would go file, export as. Uh, into some folder of my choice and I would call this background purple so that I know exactly what the image is just by the name. And I would hit export and then I would literally do that for every layer going up. I would skip the body because I've already done the eyes and the that and then I would go straight probably the next thing is the lips. So here, the pink lips. You see how it's it's just on its own right there? That's what we want. So then I would go to export as and you get the idea. And I would literally just do that for every single layer moving up, getting rid of the last one, getting rid of this, getting the new one up. So I'll give you a quick, quick, quick GIMP tutorial. Let's say we want to add a new feature, right? So um, let's say we want to test out a new earring. So I'm going to do right click in the layers over here. I'm going to do new layer. Let's just go duplicate. No, let's go new layer. And let's call this earring new. Okay, so we got this new layer. We got the old layer. I'm gonna keep this old layer just so I know where to position the new earring. And let's select our pencil. Let's select our color. It looks like a nice little gold color right there. Let's hit okay. And now you see here, I can draw. And then I can also select my the type of pen. Uh, let's undo that drawing, Control Z. Uh, let's make it a circle. Let's see here we've got size over here. I can decrease the size of my pencil. So now it's just one pixel. See that really thin line? And let's say, let's make it a little thicker. And let's just make a little nice little circle here. You know what? Sorry, I'm gonna get rid of this whole layer. We're gonna do a little circle here. Boom, look at that. Terrible little earring there. Uh, but then you can see how it looks on your model, but I'm not gonna actually do that right now because that's just gonna take too much time. We don't care about that. So, but that's, you can draw anything in GIMP. Look at that. So that's how you do it. You just create layers and layers and layers. So let's say we've made all of our drawings, our layers, we want it and we've exported them all into folders. The next thing on our list is we need to create the images using a Python script. 
Now, what I forgot to say up front is this process very tightly and slightly loosely follows a tutorial that is this one, the Scrappy Squirrels Create Generative NFT Art with Rarities. This is an excellent tutorial and I'm basically following it with a couple exceptions. Now, the main thing is you go to the, that uh, author of that tutorial has a GitHub repo, Generative Art NFT. I'll have links to the tutorial and the this GitHub repo. And this repo will allow you to create the images. This is the Python script that will turn all those layers into images. And, and I'll show you how you get this if you've never done that before. So we're gonna open up our terminal. And what we would do is we need the, the script. So we would do git init in whatever, we first navigate to whatever file directory you want, do git init, hit enter, it'll initialize the file as a able to take a git repository, then you'll do git clone, and you will take this text here, you'll copy it, so copy that, and then here we would paste it, and then I would hit enter, and it would turn this, um, it would clone all the code here in this repository, into my current repository, into my current directory on my machine. But I've already done that. So you see here, uh, we've got metadata.py, metadata.py. So I've already done that. I have these uh, Python scripts in here. So uh, granted, we have to go back one step. Where did we export all of those layers to? Well, um, we've got this. Uh, repository, the Scrappy Squirrels Generative Art Repository. You see here this Assets folder. This is the Assets folder. We have to fill it with all of our assets. So the background that I was showing you, here are the backgrounds that I exported. Here's the body. Just show you the body base. See that? That's the body base. No shirt, no lips, because those are all options that will get added on. No hair, no earrings, no necklace. Those will all get added on. Uh, earrings. Earrings hoops. See here? You just barely see it. Just the earrings by themselves. And mind you, transparent backgrounds. Doesn't really look transparent here, but um, it is a transparent background. So that is the structure, is you need every folder to have each option in them, like things are grouped. Now what we can do, we have everything in the assets of our um, Scrappy Squirrels generative art script folder. Now what we can do is, uh, we gotta do our config file. Aha. Now we can make our configuration file. And this is, uh, I see here, config.py. So it's got instructions, go ahead and read them. What we do is for every folder, so you see here every folder in the assets, will have a, um, one of these, <laughs> uh, an entry in this, uh, what is this, a list of objects, essentially. So the directory, title the directory of each of these. So ID, just give it, you know, one through whatever, how many you have, give it the name that you want and then tell it the directory name. So make sure it's, you know, it's case sensitive. It's actually the directory folder. And then required means does every image have to have this item or not? And I put true for everything. So that means every avatar has hair. Every avatar has a shirt. Every avatar has earrings, a necklace, lips, and then put rarity weights. You can either do none or uh, list your own custom weights. I put none, which means that it's gonna just randomly select. So everything kind of has an even distribution. And you see here, necklace, lips, shirts, hair, glasses, earrings. So uh, same folders get an item in this list, in this configuration list. So the next thing is we are going to, now that we have the configuration, we've got our assets, let's go back to our 
directory, and we're going to type python nft.py. Hit enter, and now it's going to ask, <clears throat> so you see here, you can create a total of 44,000 distinct avatars. You're asking yourself, that's a lot. Um, it, didn't, it didn't seem like you could make 44,000 distinct ones. Well, um, if you look here, actually, I only have like four earrings or whatever. Yeah, around four. Uh, I'm, I'm missing some of the things. But anyways, the way that it's done is because you have an option for each one, uh, with like four earrings, three glasses, seven hair, four shirts, four necklaces, seven lips, and four backgrounds, you get 37,000 different options because you have, it's basically each number times, it's this whole uh, list of numbers times, you know, four times three times seven times four times four times seven times four equals 37,000. That's how many unique combinations you can make. So that's why it's saying you can make 44,000. So, um, what I did is I made a thousand and they're all unique, but for the purposes of this, cause it takes super long to make, let's just say, let's just do 10 right now. Who would you like to call? I'm gonna call this 10. It's gonna start, look at this beautiful script. Great job, Mr. Scrappy Squirrels. Excellent work and task complete. So now what we do is we go to our finder window and we go to output here and addition 10. So you see here, addition 10 goes to, and we go, let's look at the images and look at this. Boom, that's number one, number two. So all unique, all off those layers that you've made. So that's great. So now you have, and I'll just show you really quick. Let's go out of this one. Let's go to my 1000, go to images. So, thousand unique images look at that now what we need to do is we need to upload these images to ipfs so we created our images now let's upload them to ipfs so where is my ipfs and for that we're going to use pinata and you click the upload button you upload a folder because you're going to upload the entire folder of images because the metadata is going to point to <clears throat> this base folder and it's going to be this base folder slash the token ID because the token ID is going to be an, a number and it's going to increment from zero, zero, zero to however many thousands of NFTs you want. And so the first NFT of this collection is going to be this uh, hash identifier slash zero 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 dot png and it'll, this will make us this will make sense in a second so what you're going to do is go to pinata open a free account you can you can put up to a gig onto ipfs through them you can also open up your own ipfs node for free and it's not even going to use many of your computer's resources but this was super easy and fast so go to upload go to folder select your folder generative art we're going to go to our output and um, you can go here to edition 10 click that but actually what i did is i did edition doll hairs 1k and then there's a little shoot i'm in the way there's a little upload button here and it'll upload it and then what you'll see and it'll ask you to name it and i named mine doll hairs 1k so then what that means is this is this is what gets up onto IPFS, is this folder identified by this hash. And then what you can do is you can do, I'll show you when I click this, it's the hash slash 000.png because it's the first one. So that's very important to remember. So now that we have, so let's go back to Pinata. So doll hair is 1K. So we want this hash. So let's copy this hash because this is what's going to be our base hash for all the images. And because what we're going to do now is we're going to use the Python, another Python script from the Scrappy Squirrels to create the metadata for each of these images. So let's go to our terminal. Actually, we have to go to 
our script, which I have pulled up, but I'm going to show you how you get it. So um, we need the metadata.py, and you can open with Sublime, which is what I do, and metadata.py here. There's only two things, there's only a couple things you need to change out of the box. Sorry, I forgot to mention nft.py. If you get some kind of weird index out of bounds error, I'll just let you know, I did change one thing out of the box with this code. And let me try to find it. Otherwise, I didn't touch a thing in here, but I, I did change one thing. Here we go. So down here, line 49, I changed, this was a one, I changed it to point 0.1. It just fixed it, okay? Just that's all you need to know. If you get an index out of bounds error, change the one to a point 0.1 at this, if layer rarity weights is none, rarities equals one for x in traits, change it to a point 0.1. Sorry, back to metadata. So you are going to enter that hash of the images folder here in base image URL. Then you can name, you're gonna give your base name, doll hairs number blank, because it'll fill in the rest of 000, 01, 02. And then base name, um, the name is the base name. You can do it, add a description here, collection of doll hairs and tribute to my beautiful wife. And the rest, you don't have to touch. So just know you're, you're entering the hash is really the main thing you need to do. And then, you know, give yourself a little name and uh, a description. Because uh, OpenSea actually knows, you know, how to read the description. And each NFT that gets minted, what's minted is actually this here, this base JSON bit. This is what gets minted onto the blockchain. And then all these OpenSea marketplaces, whatever, wallets, they look at the image URL, that's this this hash, and it gets slashed, it gets this hash, and then a slash image number is added to the end for each NFT that's minted. So that's um, really what the NFT is, is it's this here, with just a, a link to the image. And not even, a, you know, it's not even an active link, it's just literally IPFS slash the hash slash the image number. So how do we do that? Well, we filled out our info here in the metadata.py, and now we do Python metadata.py, hit enter. It's gonna say, what enter addition you want to generate data for. We're gonna go 10, addition exists, great. And it created the metadata for it. So now, Oh, I didn't put here that we have to upload the metadata to IPFS. Well, that's fine. So now we go back to IPFS through Pinata, and we will upload. Oh, sorry, I got to show you what I got created. So we go to output, and let's go to my 1K again, even though we just did it in edition 10. See that JSON folder? But I'll show you the 1K version. So it'll and how now has that in the output it'll have a JSON folder, and now let's look at this. So this is the JSON. This is what actually gets. Actually, does this even get minted? Never mind. We'll get there. So this is the JSON. So this is the actual data of your NFT, and here you see image. This is how. OpenSea knows how to find your image. It goes to the hash of the image folder and then 000.png. That is this right here. That is what is up on OpenSea. And so how we got that is we uploaded, we uploaded that JSON output. And then when you click on this, it brings you to this. So this is IPFS hash of the JSON folder. And if you click the first one, this is it right here at that, that metadata JSON object. With now everyone knows where to look for the image of your NFT is there. So all of that just to get us to a point 
where we can start coding. Jesus, that was a lot. Before we even got to think about what our NFT is going to do besides just get listed on OpenSea. All right. Now we've got our images, we've got our metadata all on IPFS. So now let's actually create the NFT contract. The Scrappy Squirrels tutorial shows you, uh oh, app bros. Okay, I got, I got frozen there for a second, so here we come back. All right, so we've got our, we have our images and the metadata all on IPFS. Now, now, so this image folder is in all these little JSON files. So now this is the base hash the CID, the identifier that will go into our contract. Because now what anyone can do is they can look at this hash slash zero, because that's the token ID for the first NFT, it'll be this folder slash zero, that will lead them to this metadata, which will then lead them to this image link. And that's how you actually get to here which is what OpenSea did. So that's that's the flow of what's what's happening behind the scenes when your NFTs are displayed somewhere. So this is again this is the Scrappy Squirrels uh, NFT in their tutorial. I really didn't change a single thing, um, but we're going to go run through it very briefly. I'm on Remix, and if you see here, I have my file structure. I've got my, I'm in my folder, my tutorials, and then I'm in my contracts folder, I've got NFT collectible .soul. That's this right here. We are importing a bunch of things. We're doing counters. This is for ownable, safe math. This is, we're going to inherit certain things from here. And um, don't worry too much about these. These are very, like, these are vetted by Open Zeppelin. A lot of people use them. They're regarded, generally regarded as safe to use out of the box but you certainly can screw it up on accident. The main thing though is this ERC721 enumerable. So this means that we are following the standard NFT interface. And again, that is how these marketplaces are open, able to read our NFT and it actually works because they, they can expect um, what it's the behavior that we're gonna do. So contract NFT collectible is ERC721 enumerable. Let's float me on top. It's just like a pet peeve of mine that it's sitting there. <laughs> okay, um, we're going to be using safe math for integers. Uh, what that means is whenever there's math done, we use the functions from safe math, and it just prevents like. Um, overflow errors and stuff and counters again so you can increment safely you don't, you don't want to accidentally increment past the limit of a, um, a variable and then have it round back over to zero so these are these have built-in checks so that you don't accidentally that someone can't game your contract and increment increment up until it root loops back down to zero and, and you get behavior you didn't expect um, so we've got a token IDs that should be, you know, zero to our max supply, which for this time will be 985. When I, when I asked for a thousand, it had to cut a few out cause they were accidentally duplicates. So I only really got like 985 unique images, but you get the idea. So, uh, we're going to do, um, a price that means when someone can mints directly from the, directly from the contract, they have to pay the contract 0.1 ether. And then also a max per mint, you can do batch minting and I'm only allowing people to do five per transaction. Set these to whatever you want. If you've got 30,000 images uploaded to IPFS, then change this number to 30,000. If you have two or one, change it to one or two. If you wanna charge 10 ether to mint a new 
uh, NFT, put a 10 here, whatever you want. Put a zero, you know, leave it, put zero if you don't want them to have to pay anything. Um, if you want them to mint all 30,000 at one time, let put a 30,000 here, it's up to you. Uh, the base token URI. So the base token URI is this hash of the JSON folder, which you set when you uh, deploy the contract. So um, I've called it my doll hairs collection, DHT for short. That's my, con this is my constructor here. You're gonna set the base URI in the constructor. So when we deploy this contract, we will input the hash of the JSON folder from Pinata. Now, reserve NFTs. This allows the only the owner, so whoever constructed the contract, which will be me, it only allows me to reserve NFTs. It essentially means I can mint the NFTs without paying this price, but I, I do have to pay gas fees, naturally. We're paying gas fees for everything. So um, this basically will allow me to batch mint five at a time, change it to 10, 20, 1,000, whatever you want by changing these numbers here, and you'll just pay the gas fees, which will be substantial. Let me tell you what. Uh, this just returns the base URI, set the base URI, we're doing this in the constructor. Uh, it is public, but only the owner can do it. Uh, mint NFTs, so this is this allows people, you can put, they can put the count in of how many they want to mint. It checks to make sure they're not going to go over the max supply, make sure it's not doing more than the max per mint, so they can't put more than a five here, and then it makes sure that they've paid the price. So it'll take um, uh, the price multiplied by the amount that they wanted to, to mint and say, hey, did they, did they send that much value with this transaction? Um, and if they didn't, then not enough either to purchase NFTs. And then it mints, it loops through the, uh, the mint single NFT function, which is right here. And then tokens of owner takes in the, um, an owner address and spits out all their token IDs. And then withdraw, this lets the, the owner withdraw the balance of the contract for everyone who has minted directly from the contract. So nothing too crazy, it's just minting, minting and transferring. All the transfer functionality and NFT functionality is in this contract here by Open Zeppelin. And we've just inherited it, so we're just stacking little bits of functionality on top or you know, overriding um, other functionalities. Actually, we're not really overriding, we're just specifying added functionality on top. So what we do now is we go to compile and do I want to compile it? Sure. So I would hit compile NFT collectible. And then what we would have here is I've got injected web three. That means it's connected to my MetaMask, my MetaMask wallet here, right here. And um, we're gonna select NFT collectible here in the contract to mint. Then see the deploy function. We have put IPFS in quotes, IPFS colon dash dash. This is the, the um, hash from the JSON folder. So QMA uh, ADGQ. So look here, QMA ADGQ. So this is the JSON folder hash from IPFS. And we put that in here, into here. And at the end of that is a slash, end quote, end quote. Hit deploy, MetaMask will confirm that you wanna transact. And then you will have down here in deployed contracts, your actual um, contract deployed on, this is on mainnet right now. So if I wanted to pay 70 bucks to mint seven more, five more NFTs, I would hit this reserve NFTs right here and it would say uh, confirm and how much would it want to charge me? I would have to pay $100 in fees to mint five more. I don't want to do that right now. So I'm going to reject transaction, but that's how you do it. And then you can do, um, you can mint one and pay the price if you want to. Um, you can see balance of, you can get the base token URI, see that right here. You can see um, tokens of owner, so I put my address in here, and there you go. My tokens that I own, zero through four, which is 
five NFTs, which when you go to OpenSea, you will see it here. So you'll go to OpenSea, you'll go to, uh, you can just go to your profile and literally OpenSea, I didn't have to do anything. It could see that I had NFTs on the blockchain and it lists them here. So that's literally because we're doing all of this within this like framework of ERC 721s, OpenSea could see when I log in, when I connect my MetaMask to OpenSea, it can see Mike has NFTs in his, at his address. He is the owner of NFTs. Let's show him which NFTs he owns. Great. Um, then what I can do is, because they're mine, I can create a collection. So I can call it my doll hairs collection. And I've got them all here and I can list them for sale. So I listed this one. Let's just say I want to list this one. I'll show you how to do it. So doll hairs number one, owned by you. Great. Um, up here, sell. So we click sell. Let's do this one for a fixed price. Let's say I want to do it for uh, one ETH. Duration. Well, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you all some time to buy it. So I'll give you a month. <laughs> all right. So you've got one month. Uh, there's going to be a service fee and a creator fee. Let's complete the listing. And it's going to charge fees. OpenSea, they get their fees. Okay. They get their fees from you. So let's sign. Then it is going to charge us like 10 bucks. Enable email notifications. Um, oh, your item is now listed. Okay. <laughs> All right. So it's listed. Look at that. Current price, one ETH. So now let's go back to my collection. My collections. Click on collections, get out of your little box. What are you doing? Now you can see here price one ETH for this one. This one is an auction. So this one's up for one wet. And that's it. You have now created however many NFTs you want. I paid, it hurts, okay, it hurts. To make the contract, to do this, to do the deploy, to do this deploy here of just the base contract before you even mint any of the NFTs, just to get the contract up. It was, I don't remember how many ETH, but it's it was at the time of, that when I did it, it was about $400 US doll hairs. I don't know why I did it. I just did it, okay, it's a lot. So then as you saw, to do a reserve NFT of, so to, to mint five, it was about a hundred bucks as you just saw. That's the Ethereum blockchain, that's NFTs. What a cool thing, huh? <laughs> Thank you for joining me. If you made it this far, congratulations to you. I truly, Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.